There are many people, including Christians, who will be disappointed that Bishop Kuka is standing here because there's been a lot of has been made out of the fact that we are dealing with a Muslim Muslim uh, set of people who have won the elections. What are the implications of this for Nigeria? And of course, with one side of our mouth, we also say as Nigerians that we want people to be able to govern us who love us, who cherish us, and who understand the principles of the management of diversity. Now, we will not be nervous, and we really should not be nervous about the future. Not only because it is in the hands of God, but I think that the greatest value, and I hope that this lecture that has been delivered by Uhuru Kenyatta, although unfortunately, sir, you've been in Nigeria twice, but we are not yet Uhuru. We are still, we are aspiring. We're not yet Uhuru yet. But I hope that it provides the incoming government with the texture, the material that it requires, because how to build a good society is not a complicated thing. It is not a complicated thing. And the principles and the question, because one of the things that SGF said to me was also the fact that we'll be talking about the fact that as Nigerians, we are better together. Everybody knows that we are better together. But the first question to ask is, who are we? After 9-11, the American political scientists were asking the question, who are we? Because there was a problem in terms of who people are. And I think if you live in Nigeria, all of us know. And this is why those who listen to me will attest to the fact that I don't like to talk about religion, in part because I don't believe there is a religious problem. But somehow, the Western media, the Nigerian media, and the political elite have assumed the fact that there is something between religions and that there is a conflict between religions. There is absolutely no conflict with, you know, between religions. I say to people, assuming, for example, we all have knives in our houses. Assuming you come back from work and your wife is in the kitchen and uh, she comes to welcome you with a knife in her back with which she's been slicing onions, you will have no problem entering the house. But if you had a fight with your wife before you left the house and she, he, your husband comes back and knocks on the door, and you see your wife with a knife, you will pull back. So knives by themselves are not a problem. It's what you do with them. In the same way that, you know, identities are not, identities are not a problem. Identities are not a problem. It's how you activate those identities and what you do with them. Now, will I be walking around Nigeria? And people say to me, we worry about you being in Sokoto, you know. And, you know, when I speak, I can tell a million stories. And I give you an example, what happened in Sokoto, when with the tragic story of Deborah. I was here, I, was, I had gone for a burial of the father of one of my priests, and I was on, the, on, on my way back in a car when I got a call to say that one of my priests called me to say, look, this is what is happening. And I, I got to Abuja, and I got telephone calls from everywhere. Where are you? I said, I'm in Abuja. He said, I, I hope you remain in Abuja. I hope you're not going back to Sokoto anytime soon. You know, my family members who called me, every, I said, so what am I supposed to do? No, remain in Abuja. Some people say, leave the country. And I said, to go where? And people could not understand. When I had to go back to Sokoto the next day, people said to me, I, mean, I had to just tell my friend, where are you? I, I told them I'm in Abuja. But when I got to Sokoto, I walked to my house. And uh, for me, it's, it's a very powerful image. As I entered my house, just... As I got to the gate, I saw an armored tank, soldiers, their numbers, guarding my house. And I was touched. I came out of the vehicle, and I greeted all the soldiers. I shook all of them. But I saw from their faces, they looked to me very much like full of the people, the soldiers who were guarding my house. By their height and so on. So when I went in, then later in the evening, I came back and I started talking to them. There were about 12 or 14 of them. I, first of all, I looked at them with all the equipment that they had in my house. After we greeted, I went back. At about 6.30 to 7, I came out, stood by my balcony. And I saw all of them <laughs> doing their evolution, they are preparing for their salah. And they, they prayed in my house. I'm looking at them. And this is, this is Sokoto I'm supposed to be running away from. And here are these people, they are Muslims, they are Nigerians, they are here to protect me. Nigeria is a complex country of great possibilities, great contradictions, about which 
We will not be in this crisis. Managing diversity is a science. The World Bank knows this. My brother, Dr. Akunyumi, is here. He's going, he's going to talk about all this. They understand and no country, no business, no family, no organization has a future if you don't figure out how to manage diversity. I want to conclude by saying religion has been turned into a weapon and it's a weapon of choice for politics and politicians. Welcome to my channel where we discuss all things politics, especially about the 2023 presidential election in Nigeria. In the video you just saw, most reverend and highly respected bishop of Sokoto Diocese of the Catholic Church, Bishop, bishop Matthew Hassan Kuka, delivered the inauguration speech or lecture uh, at the inauguration process of Aswadibola Metidubu and Kashin Setima. And he admitted that his presence at that occasion will offend a lot of people, especially Christians. And that, and this is basically because of the Muslim Muslim ticket. And he tried to play down the, the impact of that Muslim Muslim ticket on the polity and why a lot of people were concerned and troubled by it, especially by Christians. He understands that people will be offended by what is, he did. And he also admitted, and not only Christians, he said, you know that many people, including Christians especially, will be offended about what he did, that they will be disappointed that he, was the, he uh, made himself available to, to deliver that lecture. Perhaps Bishop don't know it. There were many prominent musicians that rejected the offer. They were to be paid. These are people that others can look at as men in the world, musicians. They rejected to perform Faswad Bola Metinubu and Shetima's inauguration. But Bishop Hassan Kuka think it's okay and he want to he wanted to he play down a whole lot of things that are troubling Nigeria and uh, he failed to speak truth to power where it mattered most and people were clapping I don't know what they were clapping for him but he know that he offended a lot of uh, Christian and was dancing around a lot of issues what he intended to achieve or what he would have lost if he had excused himself. He knew that this Christian, Christian, Muslim, Muslim ticket of the APC offended a lot of Nigerians, especially Christians, who believed that it was unfair to deny Northern Christians the opportunity to be vice president. And Hassan Kuka was there thinking it's, it's, it's not a serious matter. And people were clapping for him. Of course, those who are clapping for him is, is the audience that, that will uh, basically the APC audience. So they, they, were, they were happy to have him. One of the major critics of Buhari government, okay, literally going back to his soul for me. Because what he did was he not only approved the Muslim Muslim ticket, he also approved the the malpractice, alleged malpractices and rigging that associated with the, with the presidential election that produced the outcome that he went to deliver lecture on. Because I can tell you for free, if this was a Christian Christian triumph in an election, Christian Christian ticket, and Sheikh Gumi is invited to come and deliver such a lecture, Sheikh Gumi will not do that. He will not accept that offer. But these are some of the things that Christian leaders do that bring their religion to almost disrepute in Nigeria, to the level that even Muslims have no regards for them. And it's because of the way Muslims defend their religion and ensure that their religion are respected. Nobody dare try Christian Christian ticket in Nigeria. But look at uh, Hassan Kuka. He admitted that it was 
uh, that people would be offended that he was there. And he, then he tried to play down the impact of religion and the easy effect on Nigeria. You know. And then he now really offended a whole lot of people. Perhaps he's not aware. And it's just that the media themselves have really uh, not been very uh, critical of Hassan Kuka. Because there are some things he said there that was very unbecoming of him. For Hassan Kuka to mount the pulpit or whatever, the stage at that presidential inauguration lecture, to tell Nigeria that there is no religious problem in Nigeria. That religious problem is a creation of foreign media and Nigerian media. How could Hassan Kuka be lying to himself? Can he go to the street of Southern Kaduna, where he came from, and say that Nigeria does not have a religious problem? Can he, with a full chest, as they say in local parlance, go to the street of Southern Kaduna, where he came from, where Southern Kaduna People's Union, or Sokopa, or so, have been crying for years that there have been ethnic claims and their properties and their land taken over in Satan Kaduna, where Hassan Kuka comes from. Where he comes from. Satan Kaduna People's Union, they have been complaining that they have been ethnic cleansed and their land taken over by bandits, headers, and what have you who are not of the same faith because Southern Kaduna people are majorly Christians. So how can he, somebody from Kaduna State, Southern Kaduna in particular, lie to himself in the, under the guise of being politically correct that there is no religious problem in Nigeria, that it is a creation of the media? Is it the media that created that the reason, the, 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 the fact that most of the Chibo girls that was kidnapped were converted to a religion other than their original religion. Is it not of a fact that that was happened, that many of the Chibo girls were kidnapped and they were forced to convert to another religion? We are those who believe in, who are part of the religion of the Boko Haram adherents, where they kept as long as they kept the Christians that were kidnapped along with them. I can somebody like Kuka, who should speak truth to power, appear on national stage and literally lie to himself. Of course, he can't deceive Nigerians. His people in Southern Kaduna know what they are passing through. He cannot. He cannot say that people of Southern Kaduna are not passing through hell because of the religious problem we have in Nigeria that has not been addressed. And the thing got worse in the past eight years under the All Progressive Congress. So it is to me, it is infantile for him to say there is no religious problem in Nigeria. That the problem I uh, generated by the foreign, foreign media and local media. Come on. You should go and tell it to the family of Deborah. What was the offense of Deborah? And he did mention Deborah in his speech because he knew what happened to Deborah. Deborah, an economic student of uh, Sheu Shagari College of Education, was killed for alleged blasphemy because of what she posted on, on uh, WhatsApp. He did mention Deborah. And he, try, he, he didn't even... Take note of the fact that those that killed Deborah were not held accountable. In a country where there is law and order, they ought to have been taken held accountable. They were not held accountable. And he knows it. And he, he ought to have used it to show a typical example of intolerance in the country. A young lady aspiring to become somebody in life, went in search of education 
and she was killed for blasphemy. Her case is so pathetic that even for her parents, they, she's from originally from Niger State, that they borrowed someone. For her father to go and get her child body that was born in Sokoto, her father had to literally beg because nobody was ready. That is how serious religious problem. Nobody of the other faiths was ready to go and carry her child body, return it to Mina for burial. And Hassan Kuka will say there's no religious problem in Nigeria. Why do our leaders like to bury their head in the sand, believing that there is not a problem? And for somebody like him, whose people suffer daily, he was talking about that the day the Deborah happened that he went to bury a priest who died. Of course, he didn't tell all the circumstances that the priest died. But so many priests have been killed because of religious reasons. And many of them Catholic priests. And Hassan Kuka will be delivering a inauguration lecture telling us there's no religious problem in Nigeria. And then he, he, he made some infantile examples. Take, for example, one of the things he said. He said that when, when Deborah was killed, he was in Abuja. People were calling him, telling him that uh, uh, he better stay in Abuja, he should not come back. And then when he came back, he discovered that his house was being guided by security-made armored tankers, and that he found out he discovered that uh, those people who even come to protect him were Fulanis, and that they were Muslims, and that he was amazed that Nigeria is a country of contradictions. Why did why did they, 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 they those people were there to protect him because he was part of the elite of the elites in Nigeria, who are being protected at the expense of the people. He didn't mention the fact that so many people lost millions of naira in that Sokoto killing. Because when Deborah was killed, people took to the streets under the uh, uh, guise of fighting against blasphemy that, uh, that, that, that Deborah did within the precinct of the, of, the, of, the, of the College of Education and not on the streets of Sokoto State, but they went on the streets of Sokoto State. We are burning people's shops. We are destroying their properties. And if you if you are in doubt, go and check the report of Sahara Reporters and Punch newspaper on how people's properties were destroyed. There were pictures of it. They're online. Go and check them. So why didn't those people that protected Hassan Kuka protect protect those people and their properties? from being vandalized, from being damaged. A whole lot of people's businesses, especially people from Southeast, they lost a whole lot of things because they were the ones that oh, made, most of the major businesses along the streets that were destroyed. But Hassan Kuka was satisfied because his uh, bishop's building, perhaps his official residence, was protected by the state. So he was so happy that he now makes him realize uh, there's no religious problem in Nigeria. It is politicians that cause it. So really, is it the politicians that instigated the students, he, her classmates, people who attend the same class with Deborah, people who attend the same lecture with her, do, do the same assignment? They were the ones that stood her to death. Which politician forced them to do that? The only thing that politicians did was to protect those politicians in Sokoto, including the governor and elsewhere, that didn't hold this, those young men accountable for the life that was lost. It was very unbecoming of uh, uh, Hassan Kuka. He could have just delivered a lecture and forget about mentioning things that could offend Nigerians. And he was lucky it was an LPC audience. That was why he was not booed. Because he ought to be, he deserved to have been booed for his uh, uncanny comments and playing down other people's uh, uh, work, how that this religious issue affected other people's lives. He knows it. There was a time he wanted, he's running an NGO, he wanted to educate some um, Almajiris and stuff. He knew what he passed through about that particular project. 
Some people never liked it. And I doubt if he's still going on with that program. And he can come up and say there's no, no, no religious problem in Nigeria. It was a creation. Yet Deborah died. Yet so many, so many people were forcefully converted by Boko Haram in this country. And so many people lost their lives because of their religion. So many people are being terrorized today because of their religion. And Hassan Kuka, who ought to speak truth to power. Hassan Kuka, who ought to have told them that the Muslim Muslim ticket was a violation of the, of, 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 of the federal character principle, of the laws of Nigeria, that, that Steve Rodden was clear that no, that no religion or ethnic group shall be seen to dominate the country. That is why you have federal character. That is why you have spread in everything that is done in terms of appointment. But Hassan Kuka wants us to believe that there was no, no religious problem in Nigeria, that it was all, it was all about politicians. No, we have, it is deep-seated among Nigerians. Let us be frank about this so that we can be able to solve it. Because it is because of the kind of uh, indoctrination young men and women are getting right from their youth. That's why they are intolerant. And that is why religion is a problem in Nigeria. So for anybody to whitewash it and claim that the religion is not a problem, the person is not being fair. And especially someone like Hassan Kuka, who is expected to speak truth to power. There is a religious problem in Nigeria. And a problem identified is half solved. But if we keep on denying that there is a religious problem in Nigeria, the way Hassan Kuka was denying it, then the problem will not be solved. Then what is happening in Southern Kaduna will continue until eternity, until there is nobody left in Southern Kaduna to tell the story. That is a fact. It, it is a fact that there is a religious problem. And that is why it is practically impossible for us to have a Christian Christian presidential candidate that will win election and people will tolerate it. It will not happen. And I have no, uh, I'm saying this without, the, I, I respect my Muslim uh, brothers and friends because I love the way they guide their religion. In fact, there are many Muslims who are offended that Christians were disregarded in the Muslim Muslim ticket. They had hope that for fairness, justice, and equity, that a Christian ought to have been the running mate to a sword ball meeting. We know it. And one of the great leaders of this country have said it, that a country, a society, can survive unbelief, but it cannot survive injustice. What was done to, to Northern Christian was injustice. They ought to have produced this the, the vice presidential ticket for a balance. So he was wrong to say there's no religious problem in Nigeria and that the religion problem is a creation of the media. It wasn't the media that instigated most of the religious killings that have taken place in this country, including the mis Miss uh, Miss Ward pageant killings, including the uh, cartoon killings. A cartoon there was a cartoon that was done in in Belgium or where, somewhere like that, and people are killed in Nigeria. And you say there's no religious problem in Nigeria. You see the politician that instigated those people. Come on, let us be careful what we say, because if we really want to sort out Nigeria's problem, we have to talk truth to ourselves understand our differences so that we can be able to find a midway out of it, round about it. It is not by acquiescing and uh, uh, kotoing. When you are in your private closet, you, you say the real thing, how it's affecting you. Because I know that Hassan Kuka cannot go to the people of Southern Kaduna, speaking to them in his own local dialect and tell them there is no religious problem in Nigeria. That is just a creation 
of the media, local and foreign media. That's not true. That's not true. The media reports what happens in our country. It is what is happening in our country that they are reporting. And we are having an ethnic and religious problem in Nigeria. Make no mistake about it. We are having an ethnic and religious problem in Nigeria. That was why even during the campaign, you see people saying that people from so and so part of the country, they will never be president. They say it with their full chest. They are ready to do anything to make sure that people from that particular part of the country does not become president. They are ready to accept the worst of the worst to be president than people from certain part of the country to be president. And Hassan Kuka will be there saying no religious and ethnic problem in Nigeria. He's, he, he's been insensitive to those who suffer discrimination as a result of religion in this, in this country. And he cannot say that religion and ethnicity did not play a role when all the savage chiefs were literally from one religion. Even as I talked to the paramilitary chiefs from the, from the NS, NSCDC to customs, to immigration, to, to police, everything are from the same one religion. And you say Nigeria don't have a religious problem. Because if Nigeria don't have a religious problem, why didn't the authorities, why didn't Buhari trust others to be appointed into the security service the way he was appointed people of his own religion? What he ought to have said that let us do away with that kind of mentality of ethno-religious triumphalism and let us obey the law. Because if we follow the uh, federal character principle, there is no way that APC will tolerate a situation where their president and vice presidential candidates are of the same faith. They would have balanced it. But because they know there will be no consequences, they are doing it. Because if, if, if it were the table were at all and we have a Christian Christian ticket, Muslims will not accept it. And I, I, I will appreciate them for not accepting it. Because the truth of the matter is that if you have no regard for your religion, if you don't value your religion, other people will not value it. It's just like a person who doesn't respect his parents. His friends, when they visit their house, they will not respect his parents because they know that he has no regard for his parents. So why would they bother to respect it? So when your religion, you don't respect your religion, you don't value it, you don't, you don't, you don't, you allow it to be treated with almost disdain then that's going to be treated. And then you come out to say that there is no religious problem. There is a religious problem, but we can solve it. How do we solve it? By making sure that the laws are obeyed, federal character principles in ministerial appointments, in service chief's appointment, in whatever appointment, it must reflect federal character so that everyone will be given a sense of belonging. So Hassan Kuka in his, in his uh, inaugural, inaugural speech, just uh, entertained himself and his uh, uh, friends who are in the APC because they are the, they are the people that are happy that he was there. They were the ones that are happy that he was there. Others Nigerians were on board, were on concern. In fact, while he was speaking, what was trending on the social media was hashtag Tinubu is not my president. So he cannot uh, try to play down the impact of religion and ethnicity. And then he said that uh, religion has been turned to a weapon by politicians. But he was there to celebrate those who turned it into a weapon. Because the reason they did Muslim Muslim ticket was to weaponize religion. And he was there to canonize those who weaponized religion. He, didn't, he couldn't even excuse himself. Like I said, Sheikh Gumi, if this was a Christian, Christian triumphalism that happened, Sheikh Gumi would not present himself to come and deliver inaugural election. He will leave it for other people to come and deliver. So he's talking about uh, weaponizing uh, attorneys into weapon. This Tinubu, you should go and look at his strength of this campaign. He weaponized religion. He used it against a uh, uh, first president, Yemi Osibanjo. And they, 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 you saw it circulating in the media that Osibanjo hate Muslims. That was one of the things they used in diminishing his support among the Muslim community. 
for the primaries. So if there's anybody who weaponized this thing, it's the candidate he went to uh, celebrate. So that's a fact. So let, let him not uh, try to deceive Nigerians under the guise of, uh, um, you know, uh, or how do I put it? Political correctness. Political correctness. Those are the kind of political correctness that only Christian leaders can accept it. And that is why Christian, Christianity and Christians are the way they are in Nigeria in terms of how they are valued by decision makers. They don't, literally just don't give a damn about them. And it's also playing out. In fact, if the Muslims insist they can produce the Senate president, deputy Senate president, House of Reps speaker, and House of Reps deputy speaker, they can do it. And Christians will do nothing about it. Because when you have leaders like Hassan Kuka, who does not speak truth to power, that is what you get. Thank you for watching this video. And uh, if you are new to my channel, you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the subscription button, hit the notification bell. When you subscribe to my channel, I hit the notification bell. Anytime I have a new video, you'll be among the first to know. God bless you. And please don't forget to like this video because when you like this video, Google will rank it high and recommend it for more people. God bless you and yours.